Hey guys, today I'm gonna to be going over the story of how I actually got my first job in machine learning when I was only 19 years old um, and still a sophomore in college. So I still had a ways to go in terms of gradu graduating. Uh, but yeah, I, I just wanna sort of share how it happened, share some tips along the way. I know this is a question I had at the time, you know, how do I get a role like that? Uh, so hopefully my experience can, you know, uh, shed some light on how the process worked, at least for me. So jumping right into it, the first thing I want to talk about is sort of where I was in terms of education and machine learning ability, AI ability, um, because I had only taken a single AI course at my college, right? So this wasn't really uh, a, a huge factor in what ended up getting me the job. Um, courses were somewhat actually irrelevant. I had okay grades, but my employer never even really looked at them um, as far as I'm aware. So it, it actually played a very minor role. What was a lot more important was I think a year, roughly a year before I'd gotten this position, I had actually set a goal for myself. Um, and this goal was I knew I was interested in AI, I was interested in ML, and it, I was fairly certain it was what I wanted to do. That being said, for me, the, the slow pace of courses and having to go through all these basics first, that was really sort of boring. Um, I mean, some of it was interesting, but I wanted to, you know, dive into the interesting stuff. Um, you know, can't really blame me for that, I think. So in between my classes and during my free time, I would, you know, study by myself. Uh, I set up uh, or lots of Googling, lots of YouTube and reading Medium articles. Uh, I essentially ended up setting a goal for myself that one year after that date, I wanted to be to the level that maybe like uh, an entry level machine learning engineer would be at in terms of knowledge. A bit of an ambitious goal considering I was still going through some of the computer science basics. Uh, but I did have a fairly good understanding of those basics and I had been working in programming a bit before that, not professionally, just on personal projects and stuff. So, you know, I, I was, I, I was, you know, maybe a little optimistic, but little did I know I would actually end up getting a, you know, a job in that time. So one of the biggest things when I was learning machine learning, uh, and AI was projects. And I think this isn't just an AI thing, it's a whole slew of computer science, like the whole field, this is incredibly important and you've probably heard this before. Projects, projects, projects. Projects are so important. And that is because they help you solidify the knowledge in your mind, they help you understand concepts better, they are more content for your resume, you know, give, they give you talking points for things like interviews. So projects are super helpful. I The first project I worked on actually was re-implementing a portion of AlphaGo, which was I think this was two years after the inception, or maybe one year after the inception of the original AlphaGo. Um, a little context, that's a program that beat sort of uh, uh, one of the top players in Go, which was a, a huge accomplishment at the time. And one of the things that I looked at and was like, wow, that's really cool. I want to be able to do something like that. So I that was one of the big projects I did. And that really sort of, uh, that was a bit more than just getting my feet wet. I really did dove in head first with that project. Um, and then after that, I think the next thing that helped me out a lot was doing lots of Kaggle projects. Uh, and Kaggle is a website for doing data science projects. Things like, uh, like, oh gosh, they have all sorts of things. They have like predicting the NBA playoffs to, uh, you know, cancer research. Uh, and, and they give you these data sets and they have some sort of challenge where you work with them. And Kaggle is super helpful, not only because they have these cool data sets and cool challenges, and you can also get rewards, by the way, um, but just because you can work on a real problem and you get to see everyone else's solutions when the, the, the whole competition ends, which is really great because if you're going into practice, uh, you know, if you want to be an engineer, a practical machine learning is really important. And as great as theory is and as important as it is to make sort of these algorithms that we all use, Practice is so important and there's so many different things you learn. For example, in Kaggle, I learned how to do things like ensembling, how to better uh, prepare my data, a whole lot of things that come in handy even now. And even now, I'm, I'm in industry now and I see lots of people that don't know these very basic things I learned on Kaggle because they're not things that are taught in the classroom. And knowing those things really gave me an edge when I went to get this first position of mine. So I really couldn't recommend it more. Definitely do check out Kaggle if you're trying to do the same thing. So the next tip I want to talk about is sort of the math behind machine learning. I see this question also asked a lot, you know, where should I start? And oftentimes people will say the math, the math, the math, you know, start with linear algebra, multivariable calculus, um, and all these sort of other fields that are, don't get me wrong, super helpful to machine learning. But my advice is actually, unless you love math, which some people do, so that's awesome, then start with the math. But if you don't love math, don't start with the math. 
Um, and don't block yourself on learning the math. The math behind machine learning is super important, and I was studying it when I was sort of getting prepared uh, to go into one of these roles. But, you know, people tend to forget motivation is a factor. And if you're only studying the math and you study the math for a year just to get prepared to go into machine learning, well, you're probably never going to get to machine learning, right? Uh, you want to make sure that you interweave it uh, and, and that you get a fair amount of exciting stuff between maybe some of the stuff that bores you. To be honest, I, I enjoy the math, so this isn't so much for me, but for other people, I know the math can really be a motivation issue. So, you know, it is important, but you can do plenty of stuff without it. You can learn how to use algorithms practically. Um, so do learn the math, but, you know, feel free to interweave it. You don't have to go too fast. You don't have to wait until you get through all this math um, to get to the sort of juicy stuff. Um, you know, if you don't like the math, if you do like it, maybe that is the juicy stuff, but, uh, yeah. So that's sort of the tips I have for starting out, uh, learning machine learning. And next I want to get into sort of how I actually ended up finding this role I got hired for. The role I got, I got actually through a connection of mine. And that's why this next sort of segment is going to be me talking about how important connections are, uh, and, and how I personally recommend forging these connections. I, at the time of this sort of part of my life, I was really active in my local community. I was at a school, uh, at a college, so I ran the computer science club for the campus. I think the only one that we had at the time. Um, and then we also had a school hackathon and I directed that for two years. So throughout those sort of opportunities or while I was running those, I ended up having lots of opportunities to meet lots of people, especially during the hackathon, because not only do we have people coming from outside of the school, but you also have, you know, volunteers coming from like the local city. Uh, and, you know, it's just a really great opportunity to meet people um, and, and make those connections. So I met one guy who was a patent lawyer, um, completely unrelated or seemingly unrelated, right? But he was super interested in sort of how the like local tech community was going. And I, I forget how he realized this, but he quickly realized that I was very interested in machine learning and AI. Uh, that was my whole kind of shtick um, in college. I mean, it is still even now. I Heck, I have a channel for it. So somehow we got into the conversation of, you know, what's going on in the field. I know he was reading a book on it and he wanted like to ask me some questions about it. So, you know, I happily obliged. We ended up setting up a time after the hackathon had ended to talk over some stuff in the Starbucks. And he ended up mentioning a friend of his that was the CTO of a company. It was a smaller company uh, around a little less than 50 employees, but they had done their series A and series B funding rounds, which mean, you know, they, meant they have a fair amount of uh, leeway in terms of cash. So they were looking for someone to do machine learning though. They were a hardware company. So they wanted someone to do things like time series prediction, uh, predicting hardware failures, using a little deep learning for some audio. Uh, they, they had a few things they wanted to work on. He actually hooked me up uh, with that uh, CTO uh, and we, we got to talk to him. I sort of told them my background that, you know, I was a student, but I had all these projects I had worked on and it was something that I was very passionate about. And I think because this other person I had met, this patent lawyer, was, you know, probably spoke pretty highly of me because he had seen that I sort of knew my stuff when we were talking. Uh, you know, the this person I had met was was very into, you know, giving me a chance. And that kind of wraps back around to what I was talking about, why projects are so important. I didn't have these, you know, great grades or these great cla AI classes I was taking. I had taken one AI class. Um, but the reason I was able to get the job was because I knew my stuff. I had spent my time doing the research, doing the projects. And, and that's, again, why I sort of recommend making sure you do projects and making sure you have something to show for your, all your efforts. So I, from this guy, I ended up getting a sort of a, a first project. Uh, it was sort of a one, it was supposed to be a one-off sort of thing, or that's what they told me. Uh, although they did sort of insinuate that maybe there would be opportunities for projects later on, uh, depending on how it went. So I finished up this first project and the sort of result was fairly good. It, you know, it wasn't perfect, but I, I showed, I knew what I was talking about and that I could back that up with actual, uh, with actual, you know, code and implementation. And I did get paid for it, which was nice. So after I finished this, they actually revealed to me. Uh, this company that they had hired a separate company to do some of the similar work and they were not super satisfied with the results. And once they had found that, you know, I was not only outperforming this other company, but was also a lot more communicative um, and 
much quicker to respond to feedback, they ended up offering me a longer term sort of role as a contractor. Um, so I took that up and that's actually how I ended up getting my job. It was through a connection that I met at a hackathon that I hosted. It is quite a strange experience. Um, it's nothing that I would have ever thought would have conspired, but it was really great. It, and I think it really just went to show me how important connections are. And that kind of leads into my next tip I want to talk about, and that is how important connections really are and, you know, how to make them, especially if you, you know, you weren't going to a university like I was, because there are still lots of ways. I think connections are very important, especially for sort of smaller companies, which I, you know, was employed at. Uh, and that's because the people that make the hiring decisions and the people that are actually working on the product and talking to you are generally the same people. So if you can, you know, convince them that you're a, you know, a trustworthy individual that is competent, you know, they're, they're a lot more likely to hire you. Whereas if you're, we're talking about something like Fortune 500 companies, you know, they're a bit bigger at that point. Um, the people that are talking to you and the people that are actually making the hiring decisions and, you know, it's a lot more uh, split up at that point. So, you know, connections at that point are still important to sort of get your foot in the door, but they're not as impactful. Um, and then as you sort of work your way up to like the fang companies, uh, you know, connections become a lot, lot less impactful. Um, there are still important cases. Uh, th they're not completely irrelevant. There are cases where referrals lead to hires. Um, but sort of the smaller the company, the more impactful uh, connections are, I think. So I think one question, if, if you're not going to college for lots of people might be, well, how do I, you know, grow my connections? How do I reach out? I did, I guess, sort of have an unfair advantage in the fact that I was going to school and I could run these hackathons for my school. But, you know, this this hackathon, I'd run hackathons in the past outside of my school. So this wasn't like a thing that happened just because I was going to this university. Uh, and another thing I want to mention is that I was very involved in my sort of city's local entrepreneurship community. And I met lots of people that way. If you are looking to get involved in something like that, I highly recommend checking out meetups.com is I think the best website for finding sort of meetups around entrepreneurship or there's a bunch of other topics they have too, but I've met so many people in multiple cities that way. And yeah, it's just a really great way to meet people, make connections that will, you know, possibly benefit you in the future. And sort of the last tip I want to share before I head off is make sure you take the time when you do make those connections to actually sit down and talk with those people. I never would have expected that my, my first machine learning sort of position would come from some patent lawyer I met at a hackathon that I was hosting for my school. Like who would have guessed, right? Uh, and I think it just, you know, it really goes to show that you never know where leads will come from. So I, I really recommend if you're meeting people and they seem interesting or they want to talk, you know, take the time to talk. As long as you have, as long as you can make some time, uh, do your best to make some time. Anyway, that's all I have for now. Uh, I don't have too much more. If you're interested in seeing more content in the future, for example, maybe why I quit this job and ended up going to Google or any